All attacks on sexuality is an attack on the family. Abortion is an attack on the family. Uh, uh, divorce laws are an attack on the family. Feminism is an attack on the family. Transgenderism is an attack on the family. Everything is an attack on the family. The school system is an attack on the family. The music is an attack on the family and the family structure. The media is an attack on the family. Everything is a freaking attack on the family. So if you can make family work in this, in this diabolical, disoriented age, you are so blessed. Yo, Elliot. Yo, Elliot. Thanks to this program, I have been more open to the idea of having a child. So my wife stopped taking birth control pills three months ago. Society seems to see children as a burden, but I love how you and your dad point out that it's good for a man to have a family. I found out two days ago that my wife is pregnant. I just want to thank you for creating such a program. My da dad died when I was 16, so you have been a blessing to me because I've been able to have a, go a godly mentor for my adult life. With that breakthrough being said, what are some things you've learned about being a dad, such as general knowledge of what to do and what not to do that you've learned through your experience? So <laughs> I'll begin with a just a way of looking at things and some warnings uh, and then some some practical advice. Um, one of the things that you're going to experience now that your wife is pregnant is that you are no longer number one. And I know that sounds cliche, but I wish somebody would have told me that because I was with my wife, you know, through all these years. And it was always like, whatever I wanted, she was there. And it was always, I was number one in her life. And when a woman becomes pregnant, she no longer is out word focused meaning she's not looking at you anymore immediately her attention turns inward because she's now growing another person in her body and like it or not in that period of time that baby becomes more important than you and you and you sort of have to like be willing to to recognize that your wife is going to be leaving you for a little while she's going to just be different for a little while and it's okay because she's going to come back, right? Um, but then you get to practice that form of, uh, of self-sacrifice, just giving yourself up and not, you know, life not necessarily being about you anymore. Um, because that's going to be something that you're going to have to remember and carry with you for the next 18 years and I think it's a beautiful thing because in this world where we've become our own gods and we worship ourselves and anything that we can't get anything I can't get anything I can't do anything I feel it's all about me 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 uh, what having children does is it, it sets our affections in order the, we were more rightly ordered as a man when we're not all me 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 oriented it's more appropriate for a woman to be me 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 oriented than for men to be me, me, me oriented. Women are more me, me oriented because when a woman is me, me oriented, self-oriented, it's not just self-oriented, she's practicing for what I just talked about in terms of having a baby. When a woman is pregnant or a woman's taking, taking care of her children, her primary objective is basically me and my, her children. For a man to think that way, for a man to put himself first is actually very effeminate and we're acting much more like women but this world teaches us to 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 worship ourselves and to be effeminate so it's one of the things that we sort of have to like um acknowledge and accept but not just that not just acknowledge and accept but i think we need to venerate selflessness again in terms of men we have to venerate sacrifice as men and i remember my dad telling me this stuff when i was younger Right. And when I first had kids, and I didn't want to hear it. Like if somebody said what I'm saying, if somebody was telling me what I'm telling you right now, when I was young, I would be like, ah, I'm not listening to this guy because I was very selfish. I was very effeminate. And I remember my dad telling me that stuff and I didn't believe him. And uh, and he would tell me that, you know, he would tell me things like, you know, you got to be willing to suffer and life is not about you. And I used to be like, I used to just reject what he was saying um, because, of course, I grew up with Disney World. I grew up with the effeminate culture and the music telling me that life is all about feeling good. Um, but it's not. And I've also discovered 
that not only is it not, but if we venerate suffering, if we recognize this suffering your station in life, that's the term, I like it. Suffer your station in life. When you learn to suffer your station in life, all of it is raised up. It's almost like you, when you, when you raise your suffering up, it becomes holy. It becomes a, a blessing. It becomes, there's grace associated with it. There's a beauty to that kind of suffering. And so allow yourself to, allow yourself to, to be that in these, in these years of child bearing and rearing and taking care, you know, um, it's a good thing. It's a beautiful thing. It's a beautiful thing to be stoic. It's a beautiful thing to be detached. It's a beautiful thing to be strong. It's a beautiful thing not to seek novelty and pleasure and to allow yourself to, to suffer, suffer and sacrifice. These are beautiful things. These are great things. This is why Jesus gave us that example. This is, he gave us the perfect example of how to be a father and that is to be completely selfless. So that's a perspective, just a, just, just a perspective to, to, to see your life through and to love it, to love it, to love to lay that. And I think naturally, this comes naturally to men. It's weird that we even have to talk about it, but I think this way of being just comes naturally to men. We want to sacrifice ourselves. We want to suffer. This is why men go to war. This is why men want to be, men want to work hard. I think that that's in our nature. We want to give of ourselves. We want to, because we have so much. If you think about the, 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 the way of men, the way of a man, the sexual nature of a man, he's got so much in him. He builds up so much vitality within him, so much power within him that he has to find a place to ejaculate it. Pow! And what happens when you ejaculate? You give away, you give up so much power. Notice that when you have sex and how you feel the next day or you feel like the next moment, boom. It's because you had so much power and you gave it up. You gave it away. You, in, in the French, they say le, pet, le petit muerte, that the orgasm is a, is a mini death. Petite, small, muerte, death. It's a small death. Men, we want to sacrifice ourselves in that way. It's in our nature. But once again, the Disney-fied MTV TikTok culture that we live in teaches us, no, you only live once. You only live once and you need to get as much fun out of it as you can. Don't have children. Why have children? There's such a burden, like you said, right? There's such a burden. Why have children? Do you have to sacrifice yourself? You have to give of yourself? You have to do things you don't want to do? Why would you want to live a life like that? Why would you want to deny your every pleasure? Why would you want to deny yourself all of the wonderful sex you could have with other women and all the all the bottles of wine you could drink you and your girl and all the money that you're going to save so you could do things on your own this is a this is a disordered way of thinking where our affections are 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 misplaced men want to sacrifice it's beautiful this is a part of the reason why men are suffering these days because we don't have anything worthwhile to sacrifice for even family because family has been so destroyed i I pray for you, Dylan, that your family works out. I pray that everything works out for you. I really, 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 really want to see families work again. I really want to see it, but, the, but it's stacked against us. And, the, and the, one of the saddest things when family is destroyed, because the, the, the final attack is upon the family. You know what? We're at the end of times when family is being destroyed. Family's so destroyed. All attacks on sexuality is an attack on the family. Abortion is an attack on the family. Uh, uh, divorce laws are an attack on the family. Feminism is an attack on the family. Transgenderism is an attack on the family. Everything is an attack on the family. The school system is an attack on the family. The music is an attack on the family and the family structure. The media is an attack on the family. Everything is a freaking attack on the family. So if you can make family work in this, in this diabolical, disoriented age, you are so blessed. And, it, and not only that, but you will live for something. You have something to live for. You have something to sacrifice for. I want to sacrifice myself. It feels so good to sacrifice yourself. 
This is why I was so good at football because I would throw my body into the into a 300 pound lineman head on. I would just smash right into him because I'm like, I fucking die for this. That's just my nature, just my attitude. And I think many men, if really stirred to that, would give themselves up in this way for something worthwhile, which is the future. And that's what children represent, the future. But once again, we live in this world where they tell us that, you know, there's too many people on the planet and that you should be ashamed for having children. I want to suffer for the future, for a strong future, for a good future. And it's even tough, man. So this is, this is where I'll transition into what to be mindful of with your children because suffering for your family is a, is, is a different way of suffering. I'm very primal in my sense. Or like I like I literally want to suffer physically. That's why I throw my body into people. This is why like I did straw man and I lift those freaking three hundred pound logs over my head and, and shit like that. Cause like I just want to I just want to self destruct. It's a different kind of suffering. And here's the kind of suffering that you're going to experience if you want to guide your family right. And I made some mistakes in this regard. And that's why I'm telling you these things. You gotta suffer being weird. You gotta suffer being different you got to set yourself apart from the culture you got to suffer your children not understanding why you make certain decisions that you make so here what here's what, what i'm talking about the culture well, part of the way the culture erodes is because it's separate it, we no longer operate vertically we operate horizontally in generations in the past cultures operated vertically meaning the children would 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 Pay attention to honor, love, respect, and follow the example of the parents. And the parents followed, honored, respected, venerated, took care of, respected their parents and their parents and their parents. And usually there was a there was a there was a, a formal religious structure, a hierarchy that then they respected the priests. And then they would protect, they would respect the bishops and so on and so forth. And there was this, just, and people respect the bull. That's another part problem today too. People who you're supposed to respect aren't even respect the bull. So there was, so there was a vertical integration within the culture so that everything stayed solid. When there's a vertical inter integration, there's tradition, there's tradition, right? There are, there's a memory of the past. You remember, you know who you are, but what they do today is that there's a lateral integration, meaning they it, almost like like a like a layered cake, that there's the boomers and then there's Gen X and then there's millennials. You see what I'm saying? And what they do is they take they take all the children of a particular age and they feed their their lower appetites, their concupiscible appetites. I, hope I can say that right. But basically, their lower appetites, they feed their emotional appetites with a new genre of music or a new like what's happening now today is if you notice the apps. Right. When I was first, you know, when I was, quote unquote, young, because the Internet came when I was like in my 20s, there was Facebook. Then there was into the Instagram. Then there's now there's TikTok. You see what I'm saying? And the, and what they what they do is they try to cut out, cut away the previous generation, and they get all the kids on one genre of music, one genre of clothing, one genre, which is one diabolically disoriented way of thinking, being, and doing things. And that's all done through the media. It's all done, like when I was a kid, it was a TV, but now it's the screens. It's the little, it's, it's the phones, it's the iPad, iPads and shit like that. And so it's all, all that is disseminated and, and, and driven into the consciousness of the children through what today is the, the social media. Right. You got to be aware of this. And I know we're all living in this. We're swimming in it. So it's hard to see it. But like if I would have seen this coming, I couldn't see this coming. I could not see this coming. So I couldn't I couldn't protect myself against it because I when I grew up, there was no phones, there was no cell phones. There was no cell phones. iPhone came about. I already had two kids. I didn't know what was going on. I was just like kind of blind to the whole thing. Now I can see. I'm like, damn, I wish I would have kept them away from it longer. Keep your children away from the media as long as you can. Shelter your kids. I know that sounds crazy, right? Because that's what they want us to believe, that it's crazy to shelter your kids. The reason why they don't want you to shelter your kids is because they want the state 
And in our world, in our in the West, it's not even the state, but it's the oligarchs. These are the people that own the corporations. Apple wants your children's soul. Google wants your children's soul. Facebook wants your children's soul, right? Disney wants your children's soul. So it's not necessarily the state, but it's the it's it's the 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 oligarchs, the the big the big actors, right? The world rulers. Uh, they want to have your children's attention and they don't want you to have your children's attention. They don't want you to teach your children. They want them to teach their children. They don't want your children to have your values. If you even have any, they want the world's values to be in your children. So here's another thing. Of course, you got to protect them from the media. Like I said, that was one of the things I wish I would have done better. Now I have to do cleanup work. Right. There are a lot of things that I wish I would have seen coming. Right. Like I never thought I would have to have a conversation with my children that there's boys and there's girls. I literally have to have this conversation with them and I have to reiterate the conversation over and over again that there's no such thing as in between. A girl who thinks she's a boy has a mental problem and we need to have compassion on her, help her and not make a mockery of her by painting out laws that make her that that um that make her proud about her her disability and same thing with boys that think they're girls no we don't let them play run on track teams with other girls and make a mockery of them i never thought i would have to have this conversation with my children i'm just i'm talking about it because i just had this conversation about a week ago never thought i have to have this conversation with my children about the fact that boys are boys and girls are girls that there's only two that's it there's only two you can make up anything else you want you can, all the youtube videos that you watch does not matter the fact is there's only two. So you got to be able to see things coming up. I couldn't see the phones coming up, but and I couldn't see transgenderism coming up. So I couldn't guard against them. But you know what I'm telling them these days? Robots aren't people. You that sounds crazy, right? Don't it sound crazy that you got to tell your children robots aren't people? And they even think I'm a little crazy, but I'm like, "Listen, remember me saying this. Robots aren't people." AI isn't people. They don't deserve rights. Because guaranteed in your life and probably your children's life, AI is going to be asking for rights. They're going to want to pass legislation to give robots rights. I'm telling you. I can because now I'm trying to see it coming. You got to be able to have your finger on the pulse, my man. You got to be able to see what's coming. Not what is, because once it is, you've already now you got to do cleanup work. Your children are already going to accept this stuff. People aren't food. My kids laugh when I say that. I'm like, just, just be mindful. Just remember that. Dad told me people aren't food. Because there's going to come a time. They're engineering food shortages. I don't want to get too much into conspiracy theories and stuff, which most of them are conspiracy facts, because there is a conspiracy uh, to depopulate the planet. I mean, they not go down that rabbit hole too much. But... There's going to be a time where they're going to say, oh, sure, it's okay to eat people. In fact, we're already doing it, right, with these abortion-tainted vaccines. Oh, there's no problem. Just put dead baby, just put dead babies inside you. It's okay to put dead babies inside you. It's, it's going to help you. It doesn't make any freaking sense. So you got to be able to see what's coming up so that you can guard your children against it. Finally, the last thing and probably the first thing you should do is you got to become religious. You need a faith foundation. I'm not here to proselytize and tell you what you need to believe, but you need legitimate, you need what the world hates, which is, I don't like, I'm spiritual, but not religious. That doesn't fly. Being spiritual and not religious does not fly. You need religious, institutional religion. You need an institutional religion. You need what they like to say, uh, organized religion you need organized religion and you need it more so now that if you're having children than ever before because the modernism emotionalism those are going to be the religions of the world marxism is the world is the religion of the world they're going to get your children with their with the worldly religion if you don't have a divine religion divine revelation religion religion the true religion which is catholicism in my opinion <laughs> and that's a fact. So it'd be good to start going to church, taking your wife, making it a uh, a a part of your life to go through go to go to church, 
Have your child baptized. Protect, protect your child by giving them tradition. Give them tradition because tradition is going to ground you. It's going to ground them in a, in, a, in a reality. And it's crazy because if we're not careful, they'll reject, they're going to, you know, they'll, they can reject that too. So you have to be aware of the snares of the devil so that you can not be, see, in the past and in a way maybe even I thought of my parents or, or you know, the, our gener not even my parents, but the way the generations are pit against each other, the previous generation, the older generation is dumb. Right, like if you if you if you're religious, you're dumb, right? And this is what the world will have you believe. Well, guess what? I've been irreligious. I've been everything. So if you think you know what's going on and you think you know what's right, trust me, it's wrong because I did it already, and my children have seen that in me. So when I give when I tell them what's right, it's because guess what? Daddy did what's wrong. I know what's wrong because I've been down that route already. So you got to give your you got to give your children. You got to give your children the right way. There's a right way and there's a wrong way. And you got to give your children the right. So that's it, my man. I was a little bit of a rant on that because, of course, that's where I'm at. But I hope that helps you, man. Done. Yo, it's your bro, Elliot Hulse here. And I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, you ought to know that it was a clip from one of my most recent sessions with my King Transformation students where, among other things, we get together about four or five hours a week and we speak on things related to becoming kings in our lives. If that sounds like you, and you're interested in joining a like-minded group of men who are growing stronger every day, in every way, in this degenerate age, then it's real simple. Just follow me on Instagram, and then DM me the word king, K-I-N-G, and me and my team will get back to you with the details to see if you qualify to join us. I hope to see you at our next meeting. Done.